How was your week? How was your week? Did you and Jesus have a good week? Some, somebody here though may have disappointed Jesus. because you didn't come out of the kitchen. You didn't come out of the kitchen. And I want to talk about that today as we move through these series of sermons under the theme I serve. Brother Williams, as we talk about this quarter shaped to serve. I have to be sure, Rodney, that we don't get so wrapped up being busy that we forget to come out of the kitchen. Because after all, the most important thing going on in your life is your relationship with Jesus. Isn't that true? Come on, folk. That's the number one thing. Your relationship with Jesus. So today, with a lot of our young people gone to the youth fest, let's just, let's just talk about that. Let's pray. Lord God, speak to our hearts. I know you will. In Jesus' name, amen. We, we've been dealing with Luke 10. It's an amazing chapter. Certainly as I have restudied it, I've seen it in a new and fresh light the first 24 verses deal with Christ's command to the 70 go out and do ministry sent them out two by two and we contrasted their experience if you remember with the experience of the 12 apostles in Matthew 10, they were also sent out to do ministry two by two. The 12 disciples in Matthew 10, they were sent to the house of Israel. You recall me saying that? Sure you do. And the 70, they were sent to the Samaritans. And we drew lessons from that. We, we immediately saw, Brother Pierman, something staring at us. And what we saw was that to ready them for ministry, Christ first sent the disciples and first sent the additional 70 to people they were already acquainted with. You remember me making that point? Yeah. And we said that the lesson for us is simple, that before we can go to this this cold and indifferent and secular world, we must first of all practice. Remember that sermon, practice? We must practice. We must learn, first of all, to be truly Christian to one another. And, and I don't apologize for coming back and just reviewing that because that's key. It's how we treat each other in these pews. That becomes evidence that God can trust us in the street. Somebody ought to say amen. Because that's just the truth of it. People you worship with, you're not speaking to them. People you worship with, you talk about them. Members of your family, you, 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 you don't treat fairly and kindly. And you're going to go out to the world? That's ridiculous. 
So in the first part of Luke 10, we learn that basic principle. Start practicing on one another. And I challenge you to let your mind embrace this congregation. If there's somebody in this congregation you're not getting along with, you can't go out there till you fix it with that person. Oh, that was a pitiful amen. So I'll give you help. Amen. I'll join in with you. Because I know you wanted to say a loud amen. But the truth was too close. You couldn't get it out. Then, in the first service last week, most of you missed that, but we folk in the first church had a good time talking about the Good Samaritan. But we went at that thing a little bit differently. We saw the Good Samaritan and those around him as a lesson of the danger of being busy. We call the sermon busy, just busy. You remember the broken man, beat up. We said that represented the whole world and all the folks we got to deal with. Then the priest who came by and didn't even stop to help him, we said that represented folks involved in churchy activities. Came to Tacoma Park, elder deacon, deaconess, greeter, did the churchy stuff. On the way home, the poor lady in the cold with the, with the, with the, with the flat tire, we just, we just, we said, I'll pray for her. God bless her, pray for her. I know the Lord is near, but it's too cold. I'm going on home. Priest, churchy. And then we talked about the Levite. We said the Levite represented the, the church bureaucrats, the people involved in, 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 in policy and procedure. You know, some people, they never get anything done for the meetings they have to have. They want to make sure everything is done right before they do anything. So they do nothing. And, 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 and we took note of the fact that the Levite, he peeped over. He looked. He looked at him. And we talked about that thing that Warfield stepped on this morning. Warfield, that was good. Warfield said, we have to be careful judging folks before we help them. Oh, you should have been here this morning. Yeah. And, and, and that, that Levite, he looked over. He saw him. He probably said, that dummy had no business out here by himself on this highway. I ain't going to get myself beat up because he ain't got no sense. So the Levite went by. And then we talked about the Samaritan, represented Jesus, his compassion. Jesus is giving the man help. Jesus is, is, is staying with him all night. Jesus, him giving money to the, to the uh, innkeeper. Jesus, everything about the Samaritan was Jesus. And then we went and we talked about the innkeeper. See, when you read that story, you missed that innkeeper. We said he represented all of us. He has his little business on the corner. He's got bills to pay, mortgage, kids in school, so forth and so on. And we pointed out the fact that the Lord made sure that in spite of his busyness, he dropped this problem in his lap. And we made the point last Sabbath morning that Jesus waits until you think you can't handle any more and he gives you more. Innkeeper. He didn't need any problems. Have you ever had a kind of week where everything just piles one on top of the other? Go on and say amen. Some of you had a week like that this week. Nothing going right. Nothing working. And then in the midst of all this bad stuff, the Lord sends another problem. I was on the phone this morning with a lady driving the church. She just, just, everything just piled on top of her. And I pointed out to her that John teaches us in John 15 too that in order for us to bear fruit, God must prune us. I said to her, whenever you have a lot of trouble going on in your life, God is pruning you to get more out of you. That was just so weak. I got to do it again. Amen. Because some of you are going through it right now. You wonder why the Lord just keeps, keeps. It's because he's getting you ready to produce more. Innkeeper said, what in the world? This sick man had to take care of him. And then the Lord said, when you spend more. In other words, we made, up, we, 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 made, we made the lesson from that. That the Lord always requires you to do more than you had in mind when you said yes to ministry. Well, 
There's only one section now of Luke left. Stuff about the kitchen. What's the pastor going to talk about the kitchen? Let's go read it. Come on. Let's read about the kitchen. Luke 10. Luke 10. Oh, I love this Bible. Woo! What would we do without this Bible? Beat us up sometime, though, doesn't it? You're going to get beat up today, I can tell you that smack dab now. <laughs> There's a hammer coming, y'all. <laughs> now, now, let's read it. Now, it came to pass. As they went, that he entered into a certain village. You find out from doing your homework in the, uh, in the, in the, in the commentary, it was Bethany, a few miles from Jerusalem. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Yes, yes. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Hmm. But Martha was what? Don't be afraid to say it. What was she doing? Cumbered about with what? Much serving. And came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. I wish you read Greek. Because in the Greek it's clear. She commands Jesus. I'll come back to that in a minute. Does the not care my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Bid her. She's talking to Jesus. Bid her. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. Don't you like Jesus? Called her name twice. He's saying chill. Just, just chill. You know, take a deep breath. Blow it out. Martha, Martha. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. You see, Jesus kind of shaking his head. <laughs> but one thing is needful. And Mary, wait a minute. One thing is what? Needful. One thing is what, y'all? One thing is necessary. We're going to talk about something today that's necessary. One thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part. Well, let's see what we're into here. I want to read to you verse 40 out of a very rare translation you can't even find it anymore by Kenneth Woost. Woost is one of these real deep scholars. And he, he translates, the New Test, translates the New Testament from Greek into English, but he keeps the English words in the order that the Greeks would say them. Now listen. But Martha was going around in circles. I have to enjoy this by myself, yeah. Going around in circles. That's a picture of us, y'all. Come on now. Life has us going around in circles. Somebody say amen out there. And I mean, we treading in the same track every morning. Some of y'all dress the same way every morning. I do. Certain things come in certain order. You feel more comfortable that way. And then you eat at a certain time, and 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 then you hit the freeway at a certain time, and 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 you can hardly, and you can hardly, you can hardly think for the things you have to do. Life has some of us going around in circles. Don't sit there pious. Say amen. amen. The old folks said, "Run around like a chicken with your head cut off." That's a sight, you know. So 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 says, but Martha was going around in circles, over-occupied with preparing the meal. I'm reading from Woost. And now, get this, he, he gets the Greek. And bursting in upon Jesus. Didn't say, excuse me. <laughs> Jesus and Mary are talking, y'all. Come on, O'Neal. Yeah, they're, they're having this, this, excuse me, Lord, kind of say, burst it in. Read Moost, bursting in. <laughs> she assumed a stance over him. See, the Greek word there used means she actually came and she poised herself. Jesus is sitting. She stood over him. And you know how you ladies do? <laughs> oh, yeah, that means business. When, when them hands go on them hips. Can I get a witness in this place? 
she stood over him. I'm reading it from the Greek. See, I appreciate the KJV, but Woost, he's got it. He's got it. Paint it to me, Woost. Here it is. And bursting upon Jesus, she assumed a stance over him and said, Lord, is it not a concern to you that my sister has let me down? Preparing the meal alone. Speak, therefore. Now in the Greek, that's in the imperative. That means do it now. They're talking. He's giving a Bible study. Sis walks in, boom. Hey! I'm in this kitchen by myself. Get to getting it. Tell her, get up off the duff. Because I'm, I'm sweating. Peas and rice are overcooked. Still got to do the chocolates. Green beans are heating up. And she's sitting there. Huh? Yeah, okay, woost. I'm woost. Forget about that woost. Speak therefore to her at once that she take hold. And do her part with me. That's woost. Now during the years, this year of preaching, me and the pastors are going to say much about service. And so knowing it's possible that we will lead you to miss what I'm going to talk about today. We may not want to do that, but it could happen. We know from studying the parable of the Good Samaritan that good people can be busy doing good and then miss the point. How is this possible? Well, this incident in the life of these two sisters gives us a large lesson. And the lesson is this. Listen. Service, quality, lasting service comes from proper spiritual priorities. Now, Ken Brody, I want this church to get busier than they've ever been. We're already busy. Busier than we've ever been. I mean, busy, busy, busy. Doing God's work. But ladies and gentlemen, if we're going out there doing the work of the Lord, and we're not first on our knees with Jesus, we're going to mess up out there. Hey, somebody say amen. amen. Because there are situations out there waiting for us that are too much for us to handle. You know I'm telling the truth. It's all right to sit in these pews and talk about going out and serving the world and so forth. We feel all safe in here. But folk, you got some folk out there who don't have a lick of sense. But Christ died for them. And we must be able to go and meet them as they are. And in order to do that, I need to be prayed up, filled up. And I cannot trust me because you and I know that, that life is full of the unexpected, and when you're serving people, you will be exposed to the unexpected. Service, quality of lasting service, comes from proper spiritual priorities. Mary has it, Martha does not. The story of these two sisters is not, listen, the story of these two sisters is not that one was right and the other was wrong. Jesus does not accuse Martha of doing wrong. He challenges her priorities. Come on now. If it wasn't for Martha, there'd been no food that day. He didn't tell her, don't cook. And the story is not saying that Mary can't cook. The story is saying that Mary had her priorities in order. Food from heaven first food from the earth second somebody say amen out there so the issue is priorities is that let's don't knock Martha and beat her up she is a good thank God for the Marthas you can't fill your stomach with no pages from this book praise God for Martha but Jesus is saying the prop, listen to me, the problem is there is, a, there, there is a need, there is a need that Mary has that Martha has not faced in herself. 
So Martha cooks first and stays in the kitchen longest while Mary, whose need for Christ and for salvation is greater, she puts first things first. And when we go out to do God's work, when we minister in this city, when we do whatever work we're doing, we must first start on our knees with Jesus. Start there. Now, these verses give us some contrasts. Let me paint them to you. Mary listens. Martha talks. Two, Mary's at Jesus' feet. Martha stands over him. Three, Mary is worshiping. Martha is working. Now remember, we've been talking about prayer, Bible study, worship, Christian service. If I haven't said it, they go in that order. Are you with me? Pray first, read God's word, worship, then service. Then service. Mary is worshiping, Martha's working. Four, Mary is feeding on the word. Martha is nibbling in the kitchen. Five, Mary receives instruction from Jesus. Martha instructs Jesus. Six, Mary accepts Jesus as he is. Martha corrects Jesus. Seven, Martha trusts, I'm sorry, Mary trusts Jesus. Martha questions Jesus' priority. See, the most important thing God wants to do for you is save you. Sure, he wants you to be an usher. He wants you to be a greeter. He wants you to be a deacon, a deaconess. He wants that. But the most important thing God wants to do is save you from sin. Get this sentence. So the work we do in church is not to be saved. It's because we are saved. Did you hear what I said? So our ministry is the result of what God has done for us. And you, first of all, must become deeply conscious of what God has done. When you are deeply conscious of what God has done, the way you usher, the way you greet, the way you deacon, the way you deaconess, the way you sing, when you are deeply conscious of the salvation of God, the way you do those things show. But when you're just doing a job to get recognition, Martha wanted credit for her cooking. So Martha asked Jesus, don't you care? Are you not concerned? Ladies and gentlemen, the lesson so far is clear. Service does not begin in the kitchen. It begins at the feet of Jesus. Martha was serving the meal. She was good at it. It was where she was most comfortable. It was where she was most comfortable. Mary was serving the Lord. There she was most comfortable. The Bible is not teaching that Mary could not cook. The Bible is not teaching that Martha could not worship. The story is teaching us about ordering our priorities. Jesus probably would have gone hungry physically without Martha. But Martha, listen to me. Martha was going hungry spiritually with Jesus in the house. Did you hear what I just said? How dare, how dare you pop out of bed on Monday morning and be too busy to worship? In fact, hear me, what's more important to you? Getting up early to get to work on time or getting up early to spend time with Jesus? Which inspires you the most? If your boss said to you, this morning I need you in at 7, you'd be on up. But if Jesus said to you, this morning I need you at 5 to spend some time with me. 
Come on, folk. We will roll over on Jesus in the morning. No, we ought to get up and worship and read. We will roll over on Jesus in the morning. But if that boss says he needs you at seven, you up out of the bed at five hustling. The last part of Luke is challenging us in terms of priorities and how we go about our life and how we do service. The last part of Luke is saying, hey, there's something wrong here. Let me read you again from Luke's verses 41 and 42. And answering, the Lord said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and excited about many things. But a few things there is need or of one. For Mary chose out for herself the good position, which is of such a nature that it shall not hastily be snatched from her. Martha is worried and excited about many things. It is my nature, because I'm melancholic cleric, so I like being busy. I think busy is fun. I rise up in the morning to be busy. Sister Wright can tell you, I pop out of bed. Pop up, yes sir, let's get to it. I be humming. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ready to go, ready to go, that's me, ready to go. But in order to dampen me down, see for most people, tasks intimidate them. Tasks stir me up. The more stuff to do, (laughs) yes, sir. But I have learned to dampen me down. My wife will tell you, first thing I do, grab that Bible, my little worship book, go into my room, and I take that deep breath with Jesus. Come on, somebody. I'm challenging you today. There's no use in us spending this week, talk this, this, this year, talking about service, service, going out and so forth. If we're spiritually weak, if we're spiritually weak, we will not succeed. But if we're strong in the Lord, deep in the word, prayed up and kept up and bound up by God's spirit, nothing can stop this church. We shall overcome. We will do God's work. But if we're running out there all by ourselves and we are missing what's important, this church will fail. The strength of this church is not how much talent we have, it's how much praying we do. Come on, somebody. The strength of this church is not how many people we have willing to serve, but how many people we have filled with the Holy Ghost. That's our power. That's our power. Martha was worried. Tablecloth right. Beans have enough seasoning. Now, I like people that like to do things correctly. We will see this afternoon as we take this this paste palette that we have many different types of people in the church. Thank God for people who like order. Oh, yes. Thank God for you. One thing's done correctly. Praise God for you. I'm in that group. Let's do it right. Don't do it at all. So I read my sons. But there's more to life than that. We need people who smile naturally. Come on, y'all. Yeah, who hug and they're comfortable. We need creative people. We need all of us, but all of those tendencies must be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And that comes from intentional, 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 not overlooked, not rushed through time with God. Here's the question. Here's the question. Here it is. Here it comes. How's your time with God?
Don't be too quick to say amen. How's your time with God? How was it this week? How many times did you rush out without worship? Come on now. Do you have a worship program? Do you sit regularly at the feet of Jesus? You know, Jesus is sweet. And, 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 Ellen White says that Mary was there because she had a deep sense of need of what Christ had done for her. Do you value, do you value what Jesus did to save you from sin? Are you deeply grateful? Are, do, 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 do you realize that you're a miracle of God's goodness? Do you recognize today that you ought not ever see heaven except for the grace of God? Have you seen your sins as they really are? Do you know how awful you have the capacity to be? And are you overwhelmed by God's love for you? That will drive you to your knees. Don't let these titles that some of us wear get to your head. Elder. Deacon. Oh, we love them, them titles now. Deacon. Deaconess. <laughs> Treasurer. Clerk. Choir member. Sanctuary choir. We add adjectives to it, not just a choir member. Sanctuary. Yeah. 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 Pathfinders. Well, we love titles. Pathfinder leader. Oh. Oh. Pathfinder leader, master guide. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hear me, folks. I'm making you smile purposely. Hear me. None of... <laughs> when Jesus calls your name in judgment, ain't going to be no elder nothing. <laughs> Next name up, Elder Deacon Ingham. <laughs> Henry Wright, sinner saved by grace. Hey! You don't have any titles up there. What little bit of crown you're going to have, you're going to take that off and throw it at Jesus' feet. They don't care up there. They know from whence we come. All of us are crazy but saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. So, 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 Jesus said, you're, you're excited, you're worried, and life will, some of you are sitting there right now, concerned about your children. They ain't in church, ain't been in church. Some of you have spouses, not in church. And these are distractions. And then some of us ate late the night before. <laughs> yeah, you ordered Kentucky Fried at 9 o'clock at night, brought it in. With the, you got the biscuit special with the extra biscuits and so forth. <laughs> Corn on the cob, mashed potatoes with gravy. You ate it at 9 o'clock last night. You ain't slept worth a dime all night. Wake up mad as a hog. Got to go to work. <laughs> Worried, distracted, can't keep your mind. Some of you had trouble all this week focusing, headaches, backaches. Am I telling the truth, folk? He said, Mary, you're excited and worried about many things. What's your problem? You need to get out of the kitchen. Come on out all that rat race and all that trouble and, and just put it down. Put it down. God will fix it. Put it down. Fall to your knees. Have mercy upon me, oh God. Watch him work miracles to your glory. You got to give God a chance to show off in your life. He describes her as worried and excited that prevents concentration on Jesus. I don't believe that Martha was a person who did not believe in prayer, Bible, and study of worship, but her need level was numbed by issues and duties. Is that you? I mean, the kids have to be getting ready for school. Somebody's got to take the kids to the ball game. Somebody's got to get the car repaired. 
Somebody's got to stay by for the repairman to come by the house. So I'll catch up on my Bible reading tomorrow. And don't sit there, pious. You know you did it this week. Somebody did that. I make a, I didn't read a chapter. I'll read two chapters tomorrow, Lord. What's more important? You're rushing out to be to work on time. That's a good thing. But what's more important? Now, I'm not crazy. I'm not saying you don't, you don't get to work late, Sam, while I was reading my Bible. You're going to get fired that day. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> get up earlier. Yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not crazy. Yeah, yeah. The boss don't want to hear that. You're doing what? Read an Exodus? Well, I'm going to give you Exodus and Leviticus. for. <laughs> you can read the whole Bible because you ain't coming to work tomorrow. You ain't got no job. I'm not preaching that. I'm saying get up earlier. Get out of that kitchen of stress and trouble and spend some time with God. That's all the pastor's saying. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Martha got very keyed up. I'm winding up now. Martha got very keyed up about Jesus coming. She wanted everything just right for him. Oh, watch me. I'm coming at you one more time. She wanted everything just right for him. Or was it for her or was it for him? See, am I efficient in ministry at TPC for the sake of the Savior and those I served? Or am I efficient in ministry at TPC so everybody will see how efficient I am? Now, you can fool me. So as we move, Pastor Warfield, Pastor Anwar, with these wonderful people. We just, we, 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 God has blessed us to pass through a wonderful congregation. As we move ahead, we want to be sure that our feet are planted on solid ground. What do you say? Amen. That our reasoning, our, our motivation, our priorities are clear. We don't, we, see, we, we, we don't need to show off for one another. One thing I enjoy about my head deacon, Ken Brody, he, Ken has no airs about him. None. No airs about it. Just, just does what needs to be done. Just does what needs to be done. He's looking for no credit, no pat on the back. Just what needs to be done. And many of you are that way. You've got to stay that way. Because you see, when you do a good job, people will heap praise on you. I've been praised all, most, most of my career from my preaching. All past right you can preach. I let this stuff go right in this ear, right out the other. Lest I find myself writing sermons, thinking about how much you're going to enjoy it. That's bunk! First thing I do is make sure the sermon speaks to me. So when you see me preach with fervor, folks, it ain't about you. The Lord is talking to me. If you don't get nothing, I'm getting it all. Yes! Yeah, yeah. And I get it twice. Ha! I get it when I see the Lord knows I'm a double sinner. I get it when I study it. He says, and I'm going to hit him again when he preaches it. Yes, sir. If, if, if it don't do anything for me, why am I telling you? And your ministry's got to be the same way. If your ministry is not humbling and some doing, why are you doing it? We don't need you here at this church showing off. We need you bent and broken by the Spirit of God. Doing it because it ought to be done, not for praise. If nobody ever thanks you, if nobody ever gives you any credit, no plaque, do it. Martha, would you come out the kitchen? Let me read you this quote from Desire of Ages. Go and start playing, Anwar. Here we go. The one thing that Martha needed, Desire of Ages, page 525. The one thing that Martha needed was a calm devotional spirit a deeper anxiety for 
knowledge concerning the future, immortal life. And the grace is needed, necessary rather, for spiritual advancement. I'm talking about what Martha really needed. She needed less anxiety, you can see it on the screen, for things which pass away. She's concerned about the food and the kitchen and all that. Folk, God's going to burn your kitchen up. And your clothes in your car. But what you do for Christ shall last. She needed less anxiety for the things which pass away and more for those things which endure forever. Jesus would teach his children to seize every opportunity of gaining that knowledge which will make them wise into salvation. I experience just like you experience. Sometimes those morning worships I have, God opens the Bible, he opens my mind. I'm reading old texts that I've read before. Joel, and all of a sudden God's spirit comes in and I see stuff that I've read a thousand times. I, suddenly I see what God has been trying to tell me for years. That's why you cannot miss those moments. And sometimes the devil rushes you out the door because he knows God's got something for you that will change your life. The cause of Christ needs thoughtful, energetic workers. There is a wide, there is a, there is a, there is a, there is a, left something out, there is a, Oh, there's a wide path for the Marthas with their zeal and active religious work. Let them, first, let them first sit with Mary at the feet of Jesus. Let diligence, promptness, and energy be sanctified by the grace of Christ. That's Ellen White's way of saying, slow down. Thank God for your energy. Thank God for your diligence, but slow down. Slow down. Then the life, wow, look at that. Look at that. The life will be an unconquerable power for good. I challenge you to come out of the kitchen take those special moments let Jesus come into your heart I challenge you to become tenacious about your personal time with Jesus I want you to get stubborn I want you to get angry at Satan and yourself when you rush Jesus and then give the man all your time. Jesus deserves quality time from us to him. What do you say? Let's stop insulting our Lord. I don't have time this morning, Lord. I know you understand. He does not understand. Stop telling yourself that. How can he, hanging on the cross, dying, how can he understand how you can put, he doesn't understand that. He understands you. Doesn't understand that. Into my heart. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. If you haven't figured it out, the appeal is clear today. I'm appealing to you to make your personal time with Jesus the priority that is the foundation of your service. Is that clear to everybody? I want my time with Jesus, Charlene, to be the foundation. Then whether I'm preaching, whether I'm knocking on doors, because my time with Christ is sufficient. He can trust me to serve him and others. What do you say? Do you want that? Come on now, folks. Do you want that? W would you stand with your pastor right now? Let's, let's stand together. Let's, let's seal this thing. Let, let's see if we can capture this thing. Let, let's see if we can do that. Now, I, I want it a bit warmer. So... You're reaching out now and you're grabbing somebody's hand. Balcony may have to move closer together. Across the aisle. 
Cross the aisle. That's it. Cross the aisle. Yeah, cross the aisle. Let's get this. No distance between us now. There you go. There you go. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Let's make sure the sermon is clear. Today, we are pledging by the grace of God. We will stop giving Jesus second best time and priority. Every day, he's going to be first. Every day, I start at his feet. Then, I go to the kitchen. The kitchen represents your life, your cares, your concerns, your duties, your obligations. Jesus did not say that Martha did wrong. He was saying she did it in the wrong order. With me first. In the kitchen next. See, think about it. Let's just paint the picture. If they had done that, then she and Mary could have gotten up together and fix the meal just like that. Don't let Satan rob you of the one thing that makes you really a Christian. Time with Jesus. Is the message clear? Let's pray. Now Lord, pitiful. My preaching's always pitiful. Never quite get it the way you want me to get it, but you're merciful. But I believe we got it. In spite of Henry Wright's feeble efforts, we got it. We have reminded ourselves on this last Sabbath of the first month of the year that as we talk about service, all these wonderful sermons coming, the pastors, the guest speakers, praise God, we don't want to forget the essential. It all starts with you so we've joined hands together Lord pledging ourselves and if only one person in this room today changes their schedule and the way they do things because of this sermon it was worth it to preach the sermon for that one person I would do it 10,000 times for that one person who finally says you know pastor's right I gotta stop making Jesus second place and second best. I got I to gotta stop always making Jesus, well, he understands. It's time for me to understand. I got to stop standing over Jesus and telling him what he must do for me. I need to sit at his feet, be instructed by him. So, Lord, we're dedicating ourselves. Now bear with me, saints. Bear with me. Just, just give the pastor another minute. If there be someone here who wants to give themselves to Jesus today, you haven't made that decision for baptism, that decision for Bible study. You just haven't made it. You haven't made it. You're going to let loose of the hand you're holding. You're going to say, excuse me, and work your way down the aisle to this pew. And if you feel somebody trying to come, don't hold them up. Play the song through one more time, Anwar. Let's see if somebody will come. Are you here? Just let loose of the hands. They'll let you through. Come on down front. Where are you? Come into my heart. You can do it. I'm confident you can do it. This is your day.
Blessed Jesus, you've spoken to our hearts today. And some of us have to make some arrangements about that kitchen we spend so much time in. Maybe somebody here today will even decide they're going to create a little special spot in their house where they spend time with Jesus. Some have already done that. But somebody else has never done that. A room, a corner. That's for you and Jesus. What we got to be, Lord, is more prayed up and filled up. That's the key. Then all this talk about service will bear fruit. But if we're not prayed up and filled up, we're just going to bungle the whole mess. We mean well. We need your help. In Jesus' name, all the people said, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Are you glad you came to church today?